Hello, thank you for stopping by. My name is Becky and this is Bex Reads and today I'm here to share with you my weekly reads update. These are going to be the two books that I finished reading April 1st through the 7th. Now, I did finish reading a few more books other than these two, but I'm not going to talk about them in this video because they are part of a dedicated reading vlog coming at the end of the month. So I don't want to have to like reiterate how I feel about those books. So keep an eye out for that Unstuff Your Kindle Day vlog challenge that I have, which if you don't know what that is, I will link this video down below. There's still time to participate in it if you would like to be part of a collaborative vlog challenge at the end of the month. We will be posting videos on April 25th. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the two books that I finished this week. So first up, I finished reading Midnight at the Houdini. This is a book that I had started reading last month for middle grade March. This is the story of Anna, who is a very atypical person. She's very analytical. She likes lists. She likes planning things and all that. So she is the wedding planner for her sister's wedding. And the night of her sister's wedding, she finds out that her sister is actually going to be moving to New York with her husband. And she's devastated by this because she, her sister is her best friend. Um, and she doesn't really have the best relationship with her parents. So her sister is like her person. Um, so her father is this wealthy, like hotel dude <laughs> in Las Vegas. He and his friends own a bunch of hotels. So she's pretty much like a hotel heiress. And there ends up being a tornado that touches down in Las Vegas and she, her father, and his, I think, two or three business associates have to take refuge in one of their less popular hotels called the Houdini. And they enter this hotel at midnight, hence the title. And this Houdini hotel is very mysterious, like not a lot of people go here, but yet they can't sell this hotel for some reason. And when she enters this hotel, uh, there's like nobody around. So she's exploring it and she ends up meeting this young man who talks and acts like he's not from this time period. This older woman who she finds out is running this hotel and she has some secrets. She also meets this girl who is chained up in the basement. And while she is exploring, she also meets like ghosts of people who once stayed in this hotel. So this hotel is very mysterious. And this young man tells her that if she and her father and his associates do not escape this hotel by the strike of midnight again, they will be stuck there forever. So this was a surprise to me because I bought this in a middle grade section. I had intended to read it for middle grade March. This is not a middle grade book. This is a young adult book. <laughs> Yes, our character starts out as 10 years old in the very first chapter of this book, but that's just to um, establish why she is the way she is and why she acts the way she does. The rest of the book, she is 16 years old. Plus, we also get uh, POVs from the adults in this story, which I really enjoyed. You don't really see that a lot in young adult novels. I really liked the sweet, very innocent love story not really a love story. It's like, it's like a beginner romance, if you will, but it's very sweet. No spice at all. I think they kiss maybe once, but it was really cute to see how this young man interacted with Anna because she is essentially like the first person, first woman that he's meeting. So he's very like charming and he's very gentlemanly and it's just so cute. I also really liked the family dynamics between Anna and her father because we do get to see her father's perspective in this as well. About the only thing I didn't like about this book is the why of how this hotel is the way it is. It was explained, but I was like, you're gonna have to give me more because by telling me why it is the way it is, I it just gave me more questions. I needed that elaborated on a little bit more. I also did listen to the audiobook of this, and I would have liked it if it had been um, dual cast narrated or if each of the characters had their own voice. I think that would have added a better element to it. But overall, this was enjoyable. 
and I would recommend it if it sounds interesting to you. If you see it in the uh, middle grade section, just know it's not a middle grade book. <laughs> and the other book that I finished this week was A Dragonfly in Amber by Diana Gabaldon. So I was supposed to have this finished by last month because I wanted to participate in the live show discussion with it with Jen at the Book Refuge. Unfortunately, my library hold did not come in until the day of that live show. So I managed to finish it this week though, so that is good. So this is the second book in the Outlander saga. This is about Jamie and Claire. Claire ends up time traveling back to like the 1700s to Scotland where she meets and falls in love with Jamie. And in this book, it starts off 20 years later. So we are introduced to new perspectives within this book, new characters within this book. And it's Claire telling the story of what happened after she married Jamie up until the time that she has to go back to her own time period. Uh, because she does end up going back to the 1940s. And it's her telling what happened within that time period. So this has never been a favorite book of mine within the Outlander saga. The first time I read it, I was really kind of bored for a lot of it. So on reread, I it's still not a favorite of mine. I mean, I did enjoy it because it's Jamie and Claire and I like Jamie and Claire's dynamics. But for the most part, they are in Paris in this story. And I could have cared less about anything that happened in Paris. There are some characters that they meet in Paris that I really love. However, for the most part, I just, I'm just like, can we get back to the Scotland setting, please? Uh, because I just, I like the characters that we meet when we're in Scotland. I like the things that they do when they're in Scotland. And everything that they did in Paris, I just, I could have cared less about, quite honestly. It was a lot of, like, political maneuvering in Paris, and it's, I'm just not here for it within this series. But I will say... Having reread it, I think it allowed me to enjoy it just a little bit more because I could sense those foreshadowings of events to come within the series. So I'm caught up so far. I will be moving on to my favorite book within the series, which is Voyager, relatively soon. I'm not going to start it immediately, but my hold will come in around like April 10th because I am first in line. So thank God I won't have to wait an entire month to get it read. So those were the two books that I managed to finish reading this week. Let me know down in the comments what you got read this week. Let me know if you've read either of the two books that I read and your thoughts on them. But if you don't want to comment that but would like to let me know that you made it to the end of this video, could you leave me a key emoji because that was like a prominent element to Midnight at the Houdini. And with that, thank you so much for watching, and until my next video, good luck on your next week's reading. Bye!